Good morning ladies and gents and uh, yes we still find ourselves in the lockdown and one of the next traces to prepare looking at the blackfin just a straightforward easy blackfin trace as the season really gets going now when we come out of lockdown there'll be quite a few blackfins around obviously Zululand, Natal area, Transkei uh, up to pretty much just past East London and that's where they disappear um, Having said that, I know there's been a couple caught uh, PE side, but that's rare occasions, it's not the norm. In Zululand, Natal, North Coast, South Coast, and Transkei, a lot of black fins come through this time of the year, as well as spinner sharks. And uh, so I'm going to cover a cast trace first today, and uh, I'll talk as I go along. It depends on the size of your bait you're going to use. If you're going to use just a circle hook, or you're going to add a cyst hook in the bottom all right now that depends if you're going to use a whole bonito oh, a whole mackerel bonito you're going to battle to cast but the small bonitas it will work um, if you're going to cast a small chocker if you're going to cast a whole mackerel like i said or two mackerels that you put inside one inside the other one to make it a bit more bulky and that's what you're going to cast so this is a cast bait and normally what we'll do is just your bait's going to be this big normally for casting so a circle hook on its own with a dangle is quite enough to fish for them all right now one of the our viewers asked for showing just how to add a cyst hook to a slide trace or a shark trace and that's why i'm going to add that today because it will work the same principle if you're going to use a slide trace or a bigger longer bait that you've got a cyst hook in the bottom all right let's get going guys what you're going to need it's 200 pound, I won't use less than 200 pound carbon coated steel when fishing for black fins. And a shrink sleeve, uh, anti swivel. Anti swivels prevent this from kinking when it's under pressure. Your sinker, this is for the sinker. Um, otherwise, you change your traces a lot. We all hate having a kink in your trace. Okay, so even when you don't get a bite, it kinks uh, your trace sometimes because you're using a heavy sinker. The size 3 power swivel is what I use as my main swivel. I've got a Yamashita skirt here if you want to add some color. I love fishing with them, especially for, for blackfins. I see blackfin sharks as kind of our game fish shark that we can get from the shore because of the exhilarating fight, the way it jumps um, and the way it takes you and it hunts on sight a lot. There's a lot of blackfins in, in South Africa. Definitely a species that you can quite easily target off the boats as well. A lot of black fins that steal the guys catches off the paddle skis and boats. Um, so from the side, creating a bit of a flash because black fins don't only feed in, in the discolored water like most of our sharks do. They fish, they, they'll feed in uh, and come right in if the temperature is right. And they even uh, feed in uh, or come inshore uh, in a lot warmer water than most other sharks. You can find them, they're more tropical fish. So in Mozambique, we get a lot of them in warm water, crystal clear water. You just go out, you target them, you fish for them, and it's a good chance of getting them. All right, so let's start. You're gonna, what you're comfortable with casting, with blackfin, you want a trace as long as possible. Now, look at uh, the infamous blackfin, jumps off everybody. A lot of oaks still wanna land their first blackfin. Um, as they get jumped off most of the time right in the beginning of the fight. Now what a blackfin and a spinner does is as it jumps, it spins. So it wraps your line and your trace around them and it flexes and it breaks everything. It breaks the swivels, just everything. But there's a little secret you guys must always remember is fish a fairly loose drag. Not too loose that you can get an overwind. And even on your spinning gear, when you know there's a chance for a blackfin, you keep it loose. So when it takes you, let him go and slowly tighten up to set the hook and then let him go again. Don't give him too much pressure and pull him too hard because then he's got the leverage to jump and wrap and he's got that pressure around the line. Now, what that does, it's not 100% foolproof, but it definitely gets a, a whole bunch better results than having to tighten up and keep it very tight. And that first minute to two minutes of the fight, they'll jump. I've even had blackfin that jumps after... 20 minutes in the fight, so it can still happen later, but by then it's, it's, it's used for a lot of its energy, so it's not quite as effective in jumping you off. But be sharp, you're fishing with braid, it's very direct, and this is a cast trash, so most guys will be fishing with braid. And so you need to be sharp and respond quickly and make sure you don't have too much pressure when that fish goes and it goes for a jump. 
And that's the one way of uh, bettering your success in landing them. Uh, definitely eight out of 10, it works. And uh, been landing more black fins like that. All right, guys. So the length of your trace, I wouldn't go less than 1.2 meters. And then also on your leader, the last meter of your leader on your rod, put a 150 pound carbon coated and tie that to the top of this trace. So you're just adding, so you'll have a 1.2, 1.5 meter um, trace plus another meter um, cable there. And that's for when they jump, even with not having too much pressure on the line, they'll still manage to wrap some around, but not as much, and that will give you the chance of, of actually landing that. All right, now when you cut your cable, guys, you must remember we are snelling a hook. So you want that extra bit. If you're going to make a 1.2, you cut 1.5, 1.6, even 2 meters when, when you start the trace. And that's to allow for all the knots. All right. Okay. Now, normally I would just snell a straight circle hook, 10 -o, 11 -o, 12 -o. Must add tuna circle, and that's what I'll fish with, with a dangle, because I won't, won't be using long baits. But I'm going to just put an assist hook on for the purpose of guys that just want to use this exact trace without sinker on a slide. Um, as well as throwing whole mackerel and stuff, you want that assist hook on the bottom. So you're going to tie that first. Right. Always start with the assist hook first. Now, how do you prevent, you know, a lot of guys, when you make knots using nylon or carbon coated cable, if you make the knot close to the hook, it's going to kink. It's going to kink your cable, it looks ugly. So you make a big loop like that, all right, always. And I do a figure of eight, straight figure of eight, and you can use pliers to pull it tight wherever you can hook it. I use, sorry, I'm using my teeth now, and I'm just pulling it not too tight so that I can still move it. And what you'll see now is there's no kinking. Now you pull it tight down to the hook and that is where you need an extra hand. In this case we can just hook it around the vise. You'll pull it still with your hand here and you'll use pliers just to pull the tag in. Pull that not nice and tight on itself. Okay, that's your assist hook. Done. Now what I do further, you can use pliers. I'm used to using my hand there. And you hold it on the knot and that just rounds it off nicely and secure that even fur further you have to put a lot of pressure to bend this I'll show you now when I'm finished she so wraps a cable and you can see Makes it quite neat. Above your knot, and just cut the tag off. All right. So that's a assist hook. Now, depending or judging the size of the bait you're going to cast, remember circle hook when I add it. Always coming out to the front. Always. This hook doesn't set if you don't. And. Now you're going to have to judge my dangle will hang here, that's the assist hook, that's the size of my bait, where do I want this? And you judge how long you want that assist hook. All right. What I do, you see the 90 degrees. Always. Because now this is through the fish's mouth, your bait's mouth or a dangle, and this is on the other side. If you make both like that, and it's in a fish's mouth, and it happens to pull out. There's less chance, <laughs> well, it's an offset hook. Let's just turn it around. Uh, both of them can, by chance, small chance, but pull out like that. By having at 90 degrees, no chance. This is gonna go for the corner, and if it misses, this will hit the top. All right, fishing two hooks, guys. Make sure you've got proper side cutters, long tongs, to actually cut it off if you can't get it out of the, the, the shark's mouth, because you've still got this hook. Because if your circle sets, which in most cases will happen, all right, I don't fish assist hooks anymore purely for that reason. You must have a proper hook remover to remove this out of the shark's mouth. 
uh, remember that. Please remember, don't use this trace unless you've got that equipment to actually remove it properly. Otherwise, just cut it off and let it stay in the mouth. It will fall out. Uh, it will fall out eventually. All right, carrying on with the trace. Okay, now you're going to snell this with 200 pound at least eight times. I would do it. Everyone's got their own opinion. Three, four. You have to keep it under a lot of pressure while doing it. Okay, I'm going to do nine. I'm going to do ten. Oh, I like that. Less chance of unwrapping. All right. Then hold it nice and tight between your, your index finger and your thumb. And again, remember to the front of the hook. A circle hook doesn't set if you do it the other way around. Okay. Now what I do is I do a little bit of a kink there. That just prevents, it keeps a bit of memory onto that to keep it like that. All right. Okay. Then on this particular trace, like I said, I'm going to use a skirt so that you're going to slide first before you do anything and that will go to anything else that will go just above that that's for to to attract visual attraction in the water these pink Yamashita skirts have proven themselves over and over again especially in clean water but even in dirty water all right then it comes to the NT swivel all right that we're going to add for our, for our for a sinker and that allows a semi-slide trace so the fish will pick you up and only when it hits the top swivel will the sinker pick up so you're going to need one of these brass crimps the kingfisher brass crimps and i'm using the size three now this is important look at this guys the hook section going there if that washes up you want it to be much shorter than the top part so that when it washes up when that fish grabs it it'll also bite into steel you won't bite into your nylon so but in this case fishing for blackfin i suggest that you guys put 150 pound on your leader above this in any case 150 pound uh, nylon or carbon coated all right so you're going to measure that and make sure you've got quite a bit longer and that's the height of where your sinker will be and then right here, you don't need a lot of crimping. I do about four half type crimps, not too hard. And that's stuck, that sits there. All right. Then with the NT, you don't need, uh, you don't need the beads. Hey, is this beads hole is too small for 200 bucks. Can I use a bead with a bigger hole? Empty swivel, you see what that's got? It's got that additional little tube that prevents the swivel from pulling onto this cable and kinking it. That's the purpose of an empty swivel. Right. That will go down to the bead. And then we put another one on the top of that. And then you just tie your swivel. Like I said, the size 3 is what I'll use. The power swivel is a size 3. And the same principle. Make a nice big loop. Do your figure out. four or five times and there you have it a nice long blackfin trace uh, not too long I know some guys even make these uh, really four or five meter whatever traces 
this works 100% for me guys uh, 1.2 1.5 meter trace plus you've got another meter meter and a half on your leader and that's enough steel to land it on here obviously your swivel you'll put your your sinker line and if you're going to be casting make sure your sinker line is long enough to keep in mind your dangle hanging because it will be hooking at the bottom of the dangle so you want to make the sinker line quite long all the way to the bottom here and then use the sinker you want to use in most cases fishing for sharks uh, we'll use a grapnel sinker and uh, a six to eight ounce using if you guys using uh, grind elites heavies and the tournaments eight ounce seven eight ounce that's the right sinker to load that rod and this is how I'll store this trays And there you have it, Blackfin Trace. Now guys, thank you for watching. Remember to put any comments or on, on questions you might have, things you want us to cover. Um, it's the beginning, well, we're still day five of the lockdown, so still quite a few days to go. And we can fit in all those extra clips or try our best. We've been really working around the clock to get everything edited. There's a lot of videos. But thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you push that notification button and like the video. All of that really helps us. Thanks.